Guys, we are going over seven tips and tricks for midfielders in this video, helping you to become a midfield master row. Stick around because that's coming up next. I'm finally facing it all, fearless. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Dave, and if you haven't been here before, this is Simply Soccer, where we are releasing videos every single week to help you improve your game and stand out on the pitch. So if you want more content that is around doing that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you don't miss any of the videos or content that we release that is designed to help you become a better footballer. Now guys, in this video, I want to cover midfield players, most notably central midfield players. Um, but this will still apply for anyone that plays in the midfield. We're going to be going over seven different tips and tricks that are just going to help you stand out if you remember to do these things and actually work and train on these things. So let's get right into it. So guys, before we even start, I want to try something a little new where I want you to actually write in the comments, I am a midfield master row. Now the reason we're doing that is actually a mental practice that is going to help you rewire your brain. Because one of the most important things in football is your confidence, your mentality, your identity as a player. And if you start viewing yourself as a midfield master, or someone who is an incredible midfielder, you're going to start moving more like a player that actually is that thing. So in the comments, put I am a midfield master. You can even put your name next to it if you want, and I'll be down there interacting with you as well. So guys, we're doing this a little bit differently on the whiteboard because I think it illustrates it a lot better. But let's go over the first one, which is one and two touch play. So I'll just write that in there real quick. One and two touch. And this is such a simple one. And guys, we're going to go in reverse order here. So this is number seven. Um, but this is such a simple one. Um, but it's one that a lot of players forget. In the middle of the park, there's going to be times to express yourself, to be a playmaker, to get creative. But for the majority of the time, you are going to be playing quick one and two touch football. You are either going to pass the ball back to where it came from or quickly find an open teammate in space. You're going to take one touch to maybe turn into space before you're closed down and need to pass it off. You know, you're not going to be taking multiple, multiple touches all of the time in the midfield. And so you need to make sure you're designing your training around one and two touch. This is very, very simple. You can do this against a wall. You know, I've done videos recently and I'll link some down below that actually go over how to practice your one and two touch play, not just in practicing the muscle memory of being able to pass it in that manner, but also improving your awareness, things of that nature. In fact, if you really want to master one and two touch and the skills for midfield, check out my new course passing and receiving mastery which was just released is still at launch price which means you can get it at a discount so if that is something you're interested in I will link it down below just so you can have it um, but you need to master this area one and two touch I mean I really recommend most footballers do this but if you're going to play in the midfield you have to because if you don't have this down you're going to miscontrol a pass that you one time to someone you're going to turn into trouble or have to take multiple touches and then the play slows down and then you can't be dangerous um, for example on the counter so you need to have this area mastered to function well in the middle of the park. Next guys, number six is right here. And this is know when to play safe versus take risk. All right, guys, so know when to play safe versus take risk. Now, like we said, the playing safe is going to involve a lot of the one-two touch, although you can be very attack-minded with one and two touch play, combination play, to get in behind, to find pockets of space, to put teammates in. But you need to know when to play safe versus take risk. And this has to do with football IQ. And I would argue that on the pitch, some of the smartest players are in the middle of the park. And if you don't have an intelligence um, in this game, especially as a midfielder, you're going to struggle. Because even if you have the skill set, if you're playing safe when you should be taking the risk or you're taking the risk when you should be playing safe you're going to struggle in the middle of the park this is the player who tries to force the pass when the safe option is the obvious option to go for and there really isn't anything else on this is the player when he has an opportunity to take a risk that can benefit his team just passes it backwards because he doesn't have the confidence to take that risk you need to have the ability to do both now again working on the different skills the one and two touch and everything else is going to help you have the confidence to start taking the risk because most players 
players will play safe the majority of the time, even when they have the option to take the risk. But if you want to be a much better midfield player, you want to be like a Kevin De Bruyne, uh, a David Silva, you want to be, you know, uh, even a Fabinho who plays center defensive mid but chips in with assists and goals, you have to be someone who takes risks. You have to be the kind of player that will shoot the ball. You have to be the kind of player that when that opening opens up, for you to play your teammate in that you'll actually take it but you need to know when to do both and just to give you a little preview the majority of the time yeah you'll play safe but you need to be aware of those moments when you have the opportunity to take a risk and it's worth doing so make sure you're working on understanding the difference and actually make sure you are taking some risk and that's what's going to bring us into the next one which is number five which is to express yourself all right guys so express yourself now this is essentially going to tie into taking risks because although some midfielders will act, um, be asked um, tactically to just play safe most of the time, one and two touch, not do anything too fancy, the more um, advanced midfield players, the, the more world class, the better ones, the ones that are going to make things happen, actually make the difference in the game, are the ones that are able to express themselves effectively. And to be able to do this, you need to have confidence. You need to be able to take risks. You need to be someone who's actually trying things. You need to have good shooting ability. You know, I'm going to keep coming back to the example of Kevin De Bruyne because I think he's one of the best in the world in the midfield. But he has, why is he so dangerous? It's not because he's also good at one and two touch, because he is. It's not just because his control is magnificent and all his fundamentals are mastered. It's also because this guy can shoot the ball with power, with accuracy, and score. He's a goal threat. This guy can play passes that most players can't see. He has the ability to set up goals. This guy even has amazing crossing ability, another skill set that's underrated, but as you can see, he's able to do this so effectively it adds more assists to his game. He's able to beat players one-on-one, -on -one, and he has all these skills, and then he expresses himself actually stamping his influence on the game using these skill sets because he could also have all of those skills and only ever play safe if he didn't have the confidence to use them. But because he does, because he knows to express himself, because he knows by doing this, using those skill sets, it will actually help his team win, he does. But if you want to stand out, if you want to be an incredible midfielder, you need to work yourself up to the point where you are able to express yourself in matches to the point where it affects your team in a positive way. So just learn that all good midfielders, the ones that really, really get to that place where they're indispensable to their team, where they stand out, you know, you can think of some even down the ages the Gerrards and the Lampards for example were like this they could do everything they and then they would express themselves set up goals score goals drive forward make things happen be dangerous um Although, again, you're going to be playing safe a lot of the time one or two touch a lot of the time you need to have this part of your game as well and guys, that's going to bring us to number four, which actually still ties into this and it is if you've already guessed it have an X factor now why is this important? Because again, if you look at most midfielders, and maybe you even see this among your teammates, the teams you play, you get a lot of guys who are very solid at certain things. You get the guys who can play one, two touch, good control, good movement, all of that. But do they have that X factor that helps them stand out? Or are they like every other midfielder? You know, you can pretty much take another midfielder that can play one and two touch effectively, throw them in there, and it's a carbon copy. You know, but... Does he have the ability to, for example, you know, break the, the press and, and get behind the midfield and run defense? Does he have the ability to set up um, chances with amazing crossing? Is his shooting amazing? Is shooting and finishing? He chips in with a lot of goals. Does he have an X factor? Does he have something that makes him dangerous and separates him from the pack of other midfielders? Because, guys, at the bare minimum as a midfielder, you should be able to play one or two touch and be tidy in the midfield. Because if you can't do that, you just can't operate in the center of the park. You just can't. So that's the bare minimum. But beyond that, what is your X factor? And now the goal is to obviously have mastery over all of the fundamentals which are going to help you to take more risks and express yourself on greater to greater levels. But you need to start with one. What can be that thing that you're just so good at that it benefits your team more often than not? I and mean, for midfielders... You know, one I think of immediately is having that goal threat, that amazing shooting ability. Like, if you're someone who can take the ball, you know, turn into space, and we'll get into that in a minute, but you can get into some space, turn quickly, and just from 25 yards, unleash an absolute rocket um, that's really dangerous and hard to save on net almost every single time, that is an X factor. 
That is something the other team now needs to worry about because they know, crap, if this guy gets the ball, he turns and he shoots, there's a big chance it's going to be a goal. Don't let him shoot, you know? Or, you know, your teammates will know that too. Now you have another element, another weapon that you can use to hurt the opposition. So you want to be developing some kind of an X factor. Maybe, again, it's your creativity, your ability to find that pass that nobody else can see. You know, that one-time ball over the top perfectly to your teammate. You're able to do that time and time again. Of course, having multiple X factors is better. Better, but make sure right now you're developing at least one and don't try and develop 16 at once guys go for that one like okay my shooting's pretty good I find that I'm in games in positions where I can shoot a lot but I'm not because my ability to shoot isn't so great yet um, but I can work on it and develop that as an X factor so that's something you want to be working on and developing over time all right, guys, we're on to number three, and this one is so crucial. It's a more nuanced subject, a more nuanced area of the game, and this has to do with intelligence. This has to do with soccer IQ. Um, and again, you could have all the skill in the world, but if you fail at this, you're going to struggle in the middle. And it's have speed of play mastery. And I'm going to explain what that means because this gets confused, I believe, a lot of times, but I'm going to explain what this means. So speed of play mastery. Now every, in my eyes, every midfield player should have the ability to dictate the tempo. The more players in the middle of the park, so let's say you play with a three-man diamond uh, or triangle midfield, um, like you have two in the center, one center defensive mid, or even one attacking center mid, all of them should have the ability to influence the speed of play at any time. And the speed of play is the awareness of what kind of speed of play right now is going to benefit your team. So for example, did you just win the ball back and all the other players from the opposition team are caught up field? What type of speed of play should you be going for? Slowing it down, you know, keeping it at a more neutral pace, or speeding it up? Well, if the opportunity is there, you should have the ability and the know-how and the awareness that it's time to speed it up. It's time to hurt them quickly because if you don't, the players are going to return to their defensive positions, be, get into a solid formation, and the chance may be gone. And so as a center midfield player, you need to know, all right, when do I need to calm it down because it's getting a little too frantic in here. We're losing the ball. We're not stringing passes together. Let's calm it down and let's just get the ball under our control. You need to know those moments and actually be able to have the ability to do that, to tell your team to calm down, to take control of the ball and slow it down, play it safe, get the ball under your control in that moment. But you also need to have the ability to recognize when you need to speed it up, play that first time ball to the other side, to switch the play, switch the angle of attack, to be able to go and take that risk to try and go on the counter attack. You need to know when to do which. And one of the most frustrating things, especially if you've been on a team uh, with this kind of player, is having a midfield player who doesn't know when to do which. And again, it seems so simple. Yeah, know when to speed it up, know when to slow it down. But when you have a player who just hasn't yet learned how to do that and they're trying to rush things when they shouldn't, or they're trying to slow things down when you need, you know, the ball needs to get out wide as soon as possible so we can hurt the opposition, it is one of the most frustrating things because again, you know, a second in this game, an inch in this game can make a huge difference. And so understanding speed of play, mastering speed of play, not only in your ability to execute on what needs to be done, but knowing what needs to be done is huge for a midfield player. And so I would recommend, especially when you have more of the basics down, you really look at speed of play, you really study, you know, what the best kind of um, players that would be known to do this, to dictate, play almost that quarterback role, um, how they would do it, you know, like the Pirlos, like the Javis. When would they decide to speed it up? When would they decide to slow it down? Study that and then apply it to your own game. All right, guys, this is the one I said I was going to mention earlier, and it's find blank of blank, and you may have guessed it, but it's find pockets of space. Now, um, especially if you're playing in a more attacking center uh, midfield position, this is something you'll absolutely need to do to link the defense with the attack, is find those pockets of space between the midfield and defense of your opposition. But if you're playing, especially in an attacking-minded team, or where you have a more fluid midfield where the positions are kind of interchangeable, you need to learn how to get good at this. Um, because unless you're a more defense-minded midfield player who's probably going to be playing the ball into the people who are finding the pockets of space, you need to be able to effectively recognize what space you need to 
to be in, and you need to be able to effectively then receive the ball in those pockets of space. Because even if you find them, but then your touch isn't good, or you don't know when to turn, or any of these other things, um, then it doesn't matter, right? So you need to know how to find the pockets of space, and then how to operate in those pockets of space when you're in there. But as a midfield player, you need to find that way to kind of break their defensive line, get in between the defensive line, so that maybe you can receive the ball in the pocket of space, and then hopefully one of your attackers is alert, makes the run, and you can play them in behind. It's really that simple. You can watch teams like Man City play who do it all the time. They pass around, find that pocket of space, then Sterling or someone else, Aguero, will run into the space and just a little threaded ball will get that player through. And when you're doing this effectively, that's how simple it could be. Or another one that commonly happens, you find that pocket of space, um, the right back, left back, or winger makes the run down the line, you play to him, and someone else spins in behind, and they play it across for a tap-in. But finding pockets of space effectively and operating them in them effectively can be a very dangerous skill set to have. Again, a more nuanced one, because it's not something you necessarily always think about, but having that ability is essential to getting your teammates in behind on goal, to being dangerous to the opposition. So make sure you are continually trying to find those pockets of space, kind of roaming around, looking for those, those pockets, darting into those pockets when you recognize that it's there. Um, helping your other teammates find those pockets as well by drawing defenders away. But understand, as a midfield, at least unless you're playing a more defensive role, um, even then there's still, you'll need, it'll be much easier to find pockets of space, but you'll still need to do it. But in congested areas, Areas, especially when you're on the attack as a midfielder, learn how to find those pockets of space, operate them, operate in them, and be dangerous in them. All right, guys, number one is actually bringing it back to basics, but it's something that everyone needs to be reminded of. You need to be reminded that this is incredibly important, and it's something you will always be working on no matter what level of the game you're at, and it's work on fundamentals often. Okay, and I actually uh, put in here the one I recommend you really, really, really heavily work on. Now, you need to work on all of them. Like we said, you know, we've mentioned a few in here. Um, but one of, in my eyes, the most foundational, keystone, fundamental that you can work on in football, especially for this position, is your first touch and ball control, control in general. Because ultimately, guys, with a poor first touch, poor control over the ball, every other fundamental falls apart. You know, your first touch, your control is your ability to manipulate, feel the ball, know what's going to happen when you do certain things, hit it in a certain way. And if you don't have that mastered, you're passing, you're shooting, you're dribbling, everything else is going to suffer. So I really, really recommend you are heavily working on this area. Master it. You know, look at um, some of the best center mids throughout history, for example. Uh, the first one that comes to mind is Zinedine Zidane. In my eyes, had one of the best first touch and control in the game, and it led to him being so amazing at so many other things. He just, he had the ball under a spell every single time without without um fail pretty much like you would rarely see him take a bad touch if ever and in fact he would do things with the ball um with his first touch and control that even the top level players today struggle with because he just had such a mastery over this area and so i would really recommend heavily working on your control and first touch and you can find many different drills on my channel that are going to help you with this i even have one i um released recently that's a first touch and control routine you can do. You just do the routine I go over in the video and it's gonna improve this area. But you wanna work on the fundamentals often, guys, especially as a midfielder, because a lot of what you're doing is gonna be the fundamentals, the receiving, the first touch, the control, the passing. That's a lot of what you're gonna be doing. And knowing not just the general way of doing these things, but the nuanced things, like what your body position should be when you're receiving the ball, what foot you should be passing it to when you play it off to a teammate, passing and moving. You know, it's a part of the fundamentals, but more nuanced little habits that are very, very important. Because for example, if you keep passing it to the foot that your teammate doesn't want you to pass it to, that's gonna affect you know, the play. If you are not knowing how to position your body to better receive the ball, that's gonna affect the play. You know, things happen so fast in the middle of the park, you need these really nuanced um, ideas or these nuanced skills that are a part of these fundamentals. And you get those, you work on those, you get better at those by working on the fundamentals often. You know, people and players think that just because these are the basic skills that, you know, you do them for a little bit and you're done. No, you can always learn how to do things more effectively, uh, more efficiently, better and better and better to the point where you're doing it automatically. And that's what you want to go for when doing this. 
All right, guys, question of the day is which one of these areas do you need to work on the most as a midfielder? And you can also tell me which areas you're already pretty good at. But of course, like I said, you still probably need to work on often to get better and better. Let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning into the video. Also, let me know if you enjoy this style. This is a lot different than we usually do this using the whiteboard. Um, but for myself personally, I like learning in this way when it's this type of video, more information type video. And so I thought maybe it would work for a lot of you guys as well. So just let me know if this is more engaging and much more um, easy for you to learn from and I'll make more of this nature. Anyway guys, thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.